On today's show, is Winter Corn's downfall PX Sweet Revenge? Japan wants Toyota's hybrid taxis that run on propane, and Ford puts the Super Duty on an aluminum diet. All that and more coming right up on Autoline Daily. This is Autoline Daily for September 24th, 2015. Well, as you must already know by now, because it made headlines around the world, yesterday Martin Winterkorn stepped down as CEO of Volkswagen AG. Tomorrow, the VW Supervisory Board is expected to name his replacement. Reports out of Europe say that will likely be Matthias Mueller, who now heads up Porsche. Remember, Porsche is the largest shareholder in VW AG and Porsche is controlled by the Piac family. So if Mueller gets the job, it will add fuel to the fire of the battle between Winterkorn and former chairman Ferdinand Piac. That's because Piac lost a boardroom battle earlier this year, which put Winterkorn in the CEO position. Piac was pushing for Mueller to become CEO, and now looky here, that might be about to happen. But don't get too Machiavellian about this. The investigations into VW's diesel fraud actually started while Piek was still running the company. And while it's genuinely sad to see Winterkorn's career come to a crashing end, he's stepping down with a $32 million pension. Two years ago at the Tokyo Motor Show, Toyota revealed a hybrid taxi concept that runs on LPG, or liquid propane. It's called the JPN Taxi, and now Bloomberg reports that by 2020, Toyota's taxi will account for 30% of the taxis in Tokyo. It's kind of a quirky looking car, but it boasts a good amount of interior room and has sliding doors to make it easier to get in and out of. It's expected to cost only $25,000. Taxi companies chose the JPN taxi over fuel cells because they're relatively untested, and the range of electric vehicles worried companies. Besides, LPG will give those hybrid taxis a very small carbon footprint, maybe even better than other alternatives. Did you know that car dealers generate several million jobs? That's coming up next. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires, your journey, our passion, Dow Automotive Systems, breakthrough technologies for lightweight vehicles, and by Pure Michigan, Leading the automotive world in intelligent, connected vehicles, we run on brain power. A new report from the Center for Automotive Research reveals how much of an economic impact new car dealerships have. Get this, dealers directly employ just over a million people and generate another 1.2 million spin-off jobs. That accounts for 1.5% of private sector employment in the United States. Those 2.2 million employees earned $144 billion last year and paid more than $19.3 billion in federal, state, and local taxes. Full disclosure time here, though. This report was prepared by CAR for the National Automobile Dealers Association. Ford just introduced its new Super Duty pickup, and pretty much all the improvements that were made to the F-150 have been thrust upon the heavy-duty truck as well a high-strength steel frame, aluminum body, LED lighting, and tons of new technology. Weight has been reduced by up to 350 pounds, and Ford says the new truck will be able to tow and haul more than the current model. An open C-channel design in the frame behind the cab will allow for easy aftermarket body upfit and modification. And speaking of C-shapes, you'll notice the headlights look like two big C's. It's even more pronounced with the LED lighting package. As many as seven cameras are available to aid towing, and one cool new feature is an in-cab tire pressure monitoring system for the trailer. A host of gasoline and diesel engines are available for the different models. The interior design of the Super Duty has been brought more in line with the F-150 as well. Interested customers can look for the new truck to go on sale late next year. Coming up next, John answers your comments and questions. For the people at Dow, racing is a sport and a science. We enjoy one and learn from the other. 
But like most competitive people, we like winning at both. This is the human element at work. Dow. And now it's time for some of your feedback. Boy, did you respond to this VW scandal. Kate McLeod says, if Martin Winterkorn apologized, then it had to be Martin Winterkorn who approved the deception. That's my view of how Volkswagen felt it was perfectly within their code of honor to do such a terrible thing. Buzzard wants to know, will VW have to recall all those cars, engines, and reprogram them? And what effect will it have on the engine? Well, of course, they are going to have to recall them all, and that fix will hurt their performance and drop their fuel efficiency. G.A. Brannigan raises a good point. Will all small diesels now take a hit because of VW's wanton lying and cheating? Well, GA, we're going to get the first read on that next Friday, which is when the car companies will report their sales for September. Bob Seeley asks, do you think they've made enough profit on these vehicles over the years to pay the enormous fines that they surely knew would be coming? No, this doesn't even come close. If the EPA goes for the full $18 billion fine, that's going to cripple Volkswagen. And that's just the EPA. The California Air Resources Board will nail them as well. Class action lawsuits will tie them up in courts for years. Volkswagen sales are going to take it on the chin. And now other countries are getting in line to start issuing their fines. Don Lacombe says, I think VW should be barred from selling vehicles in the U.S. for at least five years. Rich Olympio says, VW should be required to repurchase all of the cars in question at full original sticker price, regardless of age or condition, and remove them from the U.S. And Daryl Parker Jr. laments, there goes my market value for my VW. Seawolf has a practical question. I wonder if this will affect diesel pump prices in the near future. We'll have to see about that. And finally, Noxycat observes, was it not VW who was pushing to get ZEV credits for their diesel cars? That should be an extra fine. Hey, I want to thank you for all your questions and comments. Sure wish we had the time to go through them all, but you can get a second chance. Later today on AutoLine After Hours, we're going to dissect the steps that VW took to develop the software that could cheat on emission tests. That's starting today live at 3 p.m. Eastern Time, but you can always catch it later right here on the AutoLine website or on our YouTube channel. Just look for the AutoLine Network. And that wraps up today's report. Thank you for making AutoLine a part of your day.